Hello bookworms! Today I'm here with my March book haul. As always, I have a ton of things to show you, so let's just get started. I'm gonna stick with like the same format that I've been doing because I really like that system. So first I'm gonna be showing you all of the new releases that I picked up this March. So the first book that I picked up this month is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero. This story is inspired by Sherlock Holmes. It follows the descendants of Holmes and Watson who end up attending the same school together and there is a murder that occurs and then the two of them need to work together to try to figure out what it is that happened. I don't know if the murder is solved necessarily in this book because I believe this is a trilogy so I'm not sure if there's going to be a different case per book or if this one case is going to be the case that's going to span over three books, but I'm hoping for a different case each book. The descendant of Sherlock is a female. Uh, her name is Charlotte Holmes, and then the descendant of Watson is a male named Jamie Watson. Um, so I believe initially the two of them don't like each other, and then they end up having to work together, and I bet they'll probably start liking each other a little bit more, but we'll see. The next book that I picked up this month is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton, and this book is supposedly really good from what I've read. It's about a girl who's a gunslinger and there is a ton of rebellion and romance and all she wants to do is escape um, the dust walk which I believe is like the town that she's been living in her whole life and then she meets this guy and it seems like the opportunity is arising but obviously there's going to be a lot of conflict if there is rebellion going on so it just sounds like it's going to be really good and also look at how pretty the foil is on this cover. I just love when covers have like a shiny element to them. I don't know if that's just me but it's so attractive. Then I got The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey which is an Aladdin retelling except they changed the gender of the genie and the genie is actually a woman and she falls in love with Aladdin and Aladdin apparently is very charming and he's very similar to how he's in the Disney movie but there's just a whole lot more going on and a whole lot more to the story. And I'm really, 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 really looking forward to reading this one. Everyone that I've read, like that I've seen so far, all my friends that have read it have had great things to say about it. So like, I'm just so excited. I can't wait to start it. Then I picked up The Skylighter by Becky Wallace. This is the conclusion to the Keeper's Chronicles, the first book being the story spinner. And I actually already read this one and I really liked the way that the story wrapped up. I thought that this was a very good second book and I'm glad that it was a duology instead of a trilogy because there was really no need for it to drag on for another book. I felt like everything was resolved and there was exciting things that happened and it was fun to follow and it's just a really fun fantasy series so if you haven't read it yet I would definitely suggest picking up the story spinner and starting there and falling into this world because it is very unique and um, it's really interesting and I really liked it. Then I got this little short story which is Kindred Spirits by Rainbow Rowell. Um, it's a little short story that she put out for World Book Day. It's like really thin. It's a little novella. I have not actually read it yet but I'm planning on reading it very soon but I know that it follows a teenager who is heavily invested in different fandoms and I know it calls out Star Wars on the back of the book so obviously that is like right up my alley but um, I just think it's going to be something that I can really relate to and I am continuously amazed with the way that Rainbow is able to develop relationships and just put out an adorable story in such a short page span. It's just incredible. Like even her short story in My True Love Gave to Me was so good and she told like a complete tale in such limited time. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I will probably end up reading it this weekend because it's so short and how could I not? Then I picked up The Shadow Queen by CJ Redvine. This was our Spines with Wines um, pick for March and uh, we just did our live show, so I will leave a link to that down below. But this book is a fairy tale retelling, or it's a fantasy retelling of the Snow White fairy tale, except there's a lot more to it. Um, Snow White, her name is Lorelai, and she has magic, and there's also a guy who is a dragon. He has the ability to shift between being a dragon and a human, um, and it's, it was so good. I read this one too, obviously, and I really loved it. If you like the Lunar Chronicles and if you like fantasy, I would definitely suggest reading this because it's it's a fantasy Lunar Chronicles. It is, I'm so excited for the rest of this book, the rest of the books in this series because it's going to be a companion series. So the next book will be a retelling of a different fairy tale. Um, so again, even if you didn't like this book necessarily, 
you might like the next book because there's a the, there's a completed story arc so you can even just read this book and then not continue on if you don't want to but I want to. Then lastly of the new release section of this book haul, I picked up The Winner's Kiss by Marie Rutkowski and this was my most anticipated book of the month or of like, I don't know, a lot of months. I was gonna say of the year but I can't say that because there are so many books that I want on May 3rd. This is the conclusion to the Winner's Trilogy and we're finally gonna get an ending to Kestrel and Aaron's story and I cannot wait and there's actually a bookmark in it because I started reading it already and as soon as I finish filming this video I'm gonna get to go and read more so I'm gonna hurry up now. Then while I am kind of talking about fairy tales, I'm going to show you these three books that I picked up that are just so pretty and I just got them because they're really pretty. So the, they're all um, they're all illustrated by the same person. The first one is Rapunzel. It's illustrated by Sarah Gibb and um, it just, it's based on, you know, the Brothers Grimm fairy tale. Really pretty. And the entire thing is illustrated. So you can see like just some examples. Let me look up for one of my favorite. Gorgeous Tower. I love it. Oh, I love all of them. She's having tea with the prince. Like, it's just so cute. I just think that they're so pretty and I really liked these additions. I think that they're gorgeous and I'm really glad to add them to my collection. So I'll show you the other two now as well. I also picked up Sleeping Beauty. I'll look for a favorite illustration in this one too. Just like this. There's cherry blossoms everywhere, which is like my favorite thing in the world. So um, I really, really just love this page and the castle and oh, it's so pretty. I wish I could go there in real life. And then the last one that I picked up is Beauty and the Beast. And like I said before, all three of these are illustrated by Sarah Gibb. I basically just came across them somehow randomly on Amazon. Um, and once I found the first one, I was like, oh need more. So I just searched Sarah Gibbs name and I found these three and a few other things as well, which are on my wish list now, but these were the three that I like wanted immediately. This is actually the beginning page too. Um, so yeah, they're just really pretty. They're really, really cute books and I like them. <laughs> and then while I'm talking about cherry blossoms, this is actually kind of a random book. I almost forgot to include in my haul, but I got it. So um, it's called The Cherry Blossom Festival Sakura Celebration by Anne McEllen. And it's basically just a history of the Cherry Blossom Festival. And there are just so many pretty pictures of them. And I love them. And I just, I just, yeah, I love it. I actually have not gotten to read this entire thing yet. I've only read a little bit of it, but I like what I've read so far and I am looking forward to knowing more about the thing that I look forward to every spring. The next books that I picked up are a trilogy um, and it is a trilogy by Jessica Spotswood. Uh, it's called The Cahill Witch Chronicles. The first book being Born Wicked, the second book being Star Cursed, and then the third book being Sister's Fate. So Anyway, it is a series about witches and they're all sisters and it sounds really appealing to me because when I was younger I used to love TV shows like Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Charmed and all those kinds of things. So I think that I'm really going to enjoy this series. Next I'll be showing you all of the fantasy books that I picked up this month. The first book that I got is The Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare. Maureen Johnson and Sarah Reese Brennan. So anyway, this book is a book of short stories all following the warlock Magnus Bane from the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices series. Magnus has been my favorite character in the series throughout all of the four, six books that I have read so far, two of the Infernal Devices and four of the Mortal Instruments. So I really am interested in just hearing more of his stories because why not read more about my favorite character. So that was the motivation behind picking this one up. Then I picked up Iona, which is the conclusion to the Eon Iona duology. I have not yet read the first one, but I know that I'm gonna like it. So I just wanted the second one and that is why I picked it up. But I can't tell you what it's about because I haven't read the first one and I'm not about to read the synopsis and spoil myself for that one. So if you wanna know a little bit more about the series, Alexa talked about it in our fantasy recommendations video, which I'll leave linked down below. Then the next books that I picked up are also a trilogy. Um, and it is the Captive Prince trilogy by C.S. Picot. These books have been like really big online, especially on Tumblr. So I got really interested in it. And my friend Melissa Gray, who wrote The Girl at Midnight, loved them. So she kind of convinced me to get them. So the first book is The Captive Prince. Then the second book is The Prince's Gambit. 
and the third book is King's Rising and just in case you are not familiar with these I believe that it is kind of an explicit story so it's not really for anybody that's going to be uh on the younger side so steer clear of them if you're young wait till you're a little bit older if not supposedly a really good fantasy series so I'm looking forward to reading it and they're also rather short I was kind of surprised um at how small they are. Then I picked up All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders. This is a book about I think it's like an apocalyptic type did I say that weird? It's an apocalyptic ap oh no <laughs> no sometimes I can't say this word it's an apocalyptic apocalyptic <laughs> oh Angie's gonna love this <laughs> It takes place in an apocalypse and there we go it follows um there are like two different main characters there's a guy main character and a girl main character and one of them is very scientific in all of their reasoning and theories and the other one they believe in fate and in uh, a lot of things being out of their control so they each have very different motivations behind their ways of thinking um, so obviously they're going to handle things differently but I believe that they're best friends and I think the ultimate like moral of this story is that it is always better to do good things for other people so it sounds really intriguing um, and for those that might not know Charlie Jane Anders is actually the uh, editor-in-chief of io9 which is a really popular science fiction blog um, so if you want to read that too that's out there I've been reading that blog for years and I really enjoy it so when I found out about his book I was really excited to pick this one up as well and actually my fiance um, Andrew his dad had also told me about this so yes it had, comes highly recommended the next book that I picked up is uh, Spindle's End by Robin McKinley and this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling and the cover is so pretty and that is like the main reason that I picked it up because I was just like whoa because um, I remembered what was how did I do that oh you know what I picked up Beauty recently and I really loved Sunshine by Robin McKinley so I was like oh, I'm just gonna look and see what else Robin McKinley has out there and then I came across this and I was like that's gorgeous so that's how I ended up getting this one um, it's just so pretty. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I have been really into fairy tale retellings, um, especially lately. I don't know why I'm just like on this kick. So, um, that this falls into that category. The last like fantasy-esque book that I picked up is The A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. I never read this series and, um, I've heard really good things about it. And I actually listened to a podcast about it where they were reading this book called The Sword and Later sword and laser podcast it's one of my favorite podcasts the way that they talked about it made it sound like it's kind of the original harry potter it's about a kid in a boarding school who like a wizard boarding school so um it's uh, interesting because i had no idea that that was the premise of this and obviously this came out way before harry potter so i'm just really interested to to find out about it i think there are six books in the series so if i like this one then i'll order the rest of them um but yeah, it sounds really, really good and really interesting. And also, apparently, Ursula K. Le Guin went to high school with Philip K. Dick, who is another really cool sci-fi uh, author. So yeah. And then the last section of books that I have to show you are my contemporary reads, because now that spring is here, I am going to be wanting to read a lot more of them. So here are the things that I picked up. First, I picked up the first three books in the Hundred Oaks series. The first one being Catching Jordan, the second one being Stealing Parker, and the third one being Things I Can't Forget. All of these are by Miranda Keenley. I cannot say her last name, I'm just not sure. So hopefully that was close. This is actually a companion series, so there are actually seven books in total and the eighth one is coming out sometime in the future but they each follow a different set of characters, all of whom attend Hundred Oaks High or are in their senior year of Hundred Oaks High or whatever the case might be. But I already read the first book, Catching Jordan. I liked it. Um, I thought it was really cute and adorable and I really liked the writing and I was surprised that I liked it so much because it's about football and supposedly each book is kind of about a different sport like it looks like the second one might be about softball something definitely different and definitely outside of my comfort zone because I am not a sports person at all you'll hear more about my thoughts of catching Jordan in my March wrap-up which will be up 
at some point soon ish so I won't really get into that but yeah these are just fun contemporaries and I'm looking forward to reading more of them. Then the next book that I picked up is Just One Day by Gail Foreman. I have only read Gail Foreman's um, duology, the If I Stay and Where She Went. So I really liked those and I really want to read more of her books. And this one sounded really good because it involves travel. So there's a girl and she's on a European tour and then she meets this guy who convinces her to kind of stop following the rules and just come with him to Paris and then, you know, it just sounds like really romantic, really adorable, and really fun that there's this whole travel element to this romance and that it's set in Europe, which is obviously very enticing. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Then I picked up Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, which is the only Morgan Matson book that I have not yet read, and that is because I have heard over and over again how sad it is. So it's really hard for me to be like, yes, I want to be really sad and read a really sad book right now. I do want to read it because I love Morgan Matson's stories, but I'm nervous and that's why I've waited so long to get this, but it's here. So now I'm, I'm going to do it at some point. So a little synopsis of this is that it follows a main character named Taylor and um, her dad gets some bad news. I want to say he's like sick or something. So her family all decides to go back to the summer house that they used to spend time in together. And um, now that everyone's gotten older, it's kind of tight quarters, but it sounds like it's gonna be sad. But I, I still want to read it. I do. Then I have More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. I actually listened to a podcast with Adam Silvera on it and it was really interesting and he was really hilarious and he just sounded like an awesome person so now I'm really interested in reading his book and I also thought it was really cool because More, ha More Happy Than Not is set in the Bronx um, which is a really unusual uh, place for a book to be set especially a YA book. Typically most books will be set in like bigger places like either they're small places kind of in the middle of the country or like they're New York City or you know Los Angeles or something like that it's not really ever like the Bronx it's just so unusual so and it's a place that is close by to New York City so I just find that really interesting and I'm looking forward to reading it. The next book that I picked up is The Wrong Side of Right by Jen Marie Thorne and I believe this was her debut novel. It came out last year and I've heard good things about it. Um, it's a contemporary novel about a girl who lost her family and then she ends up kind of falling for a rebellious boy whose father is running for some kind of government position. Um, so there's a political subplot going on and um, I think it's it's going to be a lot about like finding herself and making choices and deciding what is right versus what is wrong and it sounds really cute and I'm really looking forward to it and actually like the cover is really pretty which is kind of what drew me to it but now that I'm looking like even closer at it um you can't you probably can't tell from the video but um this whole backdrop is actually um a map of the United States so but it's just like really like overlaid with pink and orange so you can't really see it but that's interesting and I just noticed that so that was fun. And then the last book that I have is Nowhere But Here by Katie McGarry and this is the first book in the Thunder Road series. Um, this again is something that's a little bit outside of my comfort zone because it follows biker gang thing so um, it sounds interesting. It's actually longer than I was expecting. It's kind of long for a contemporary. By biker gang I mean motorcycle club. That's <laughs> probably a nicer term. Anyway, I believe the main character's biological father is part of this motorcycle club. And um, so she kind of goes and learns about his life in that. And then she obviously meets a boy. And um, yeah, sounds pretty cute. I'm looking forward to it. And the second one, Walk the Edge just came out last week, I want to say. So if I like this one, then I'll end up getting that one too. So there you have it. Those are all the books that I picked up in March, I think. I think there's a good chance that I left some out. Oh, I did. Hold on. Two more. So, really surprisingly, I have never read a Sarah Dessen book, which is something that I am planning on changing. I am almost, I'm like ashamed to admit that, but it is the case. So I ended up actually winning a challenge for one of the reading challenges that I am participating in for the year, the Contemporary Romance Challenge. So um, I was able to pick a book of my choice and have it sent to me. So um, I emailed Jess back and I told her that she could surprise me with a Sarah Dessen book. So she ended up getting me 
along for the ride. So I am planning on reading this very soon. This will be the first Sarah Dustin book that I am going to read ever. And if I enjoy it, which I think I will, I will end up reading a lot more of her books because I don't know why I just never picked any of them up, but there are more that sound good, so. I have another book that I forgot about. I honestly cannot remember if I hauled this in my last haul or not, but I don't think that I did. Um, but I, I ended up winning a contest um, on, another contest on um, uh, Stephanie in Wonderland's blog, and I was able to pick a book from Book Depository of my choice. So I chose Storm Dancer by Jay Kristoff, which looks really, really interesting. Jay Kristoff is one of the writers of Illuminae, um, and also I really want his new series that's coming out, Nevernight. Um, in the middle of the summer. Like, really looking forward to that one. But anyway, this one is very, like, Asian-inspired, and this is actually the UK cover, because I think that they're so much prettier. So it is about a girl who um, was given a mission by the Shogun to hunt down a griffin, and griffins apparently don't like humans, so... But the two of them form some kind of bond, like, against all odds, and then they kind of rise up together and a rebellion against the gov the um, government is kind of inevitable after that. So it sounds really interesting. I'm looking forward to reading this one. So those are all of the books that I picked up this March. There are a lot of them, but hopefully you found something that sounds interesting and something that you might pick up as a result of my book addiction. So anyway, um, let me know if there are any of them that you've read that I should read ASAP or any of them that you are going to pick up. So that is all that I have for this video and I will see you guys soon with a new one. Bye!